I feel like I've been talking about this for at least a decade. Is this the one? Is this the one? Well, this, uh, as I've been saying, this proof will still be in the pudding, but this is unprecedented. Uh, Tom just said something about the data, and I'm not talking about the data that you were referencing, but when investors invest in companies, they need to ensure they look at financial data, and they need to know that that financial data has been checked by auditors. And guess what? That the auditors have somebody looking over their shoulder as well. That there's somebody auditing the auditors. And that's our basic system of checking data in our capital markets. And 20 years ago, Congress yeah. passed a law. And 20 years later, the Chinese still had not complied with that law about allowing inspections of the auditors. We have this unprecedented arrangement signed this morning, but we still need to see over the next several months whether there'll be compliance and whether uh, our inspectors from the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board will be able to do the inspections when they go to Asia. Yeah. Gary, can you give us a sense of what went on behind the scenes to get to this point? What did the U.S. have to give up to get China to allow this type of oversight? Uh, Lisa, it's actually a little bit different than that. It's that we have the world's deepest, most liquid capital markets. And I think that Congress stepping in in December of 2020 and then reaffirming again in the summer of 21, and my shout out to Senators Van Hollen and Senator Kennedy, bipartisan, who led that effort, um, uh, to say that there was a clock, that there was going to be a three-year clock if China didn't comply, all 200 of these companies are going to have to leave our U.S. capital markets. And then uh, the SEC and this other organization, the PCOB, uh, uh, in the last year and a half have been really effectuating the will of Congress. And I think when we Americans speak with one, you know, bipartisan voice, unanimous uh, voice from Congress, from the, from the SEC and the PCOB, um, I think the Chinese had to take a look at this and say, you know what, we, we want to continue to have this access. So actually, the agreement is more prescriptive, more detailed, uh, more yeah. specific than any that are with any other country, because we've had, as John said, these 10 or 15 years of non-compliance. And uh, the proof will be in the pudding. But I, I really, I do want to say that it's been constructive, productive conversations with the Ministry of Finance from China, with the, what's called the CSRC, the China Securities Regulatory Commission. And we were always into problem solving. How can we uh, get to the important compliance? It's a simple idea that we can check the auditor's work papers. We can take testimony that we can select whatever. It's been so, so simple for so, so long. I feel like it's, it's ridiculous that we've only just been able to come to an agreement. And I know you think exactly the same way. I've got to squeeze this in because the chairman's going to speak any moment from now. So in just 60 seconds, if you can, you said the proof is in the pudding. When is the pudding served? When do I know that this is actually a success? When will you know? So we'll be sending the inspectors, these PCOB inspectors, starting mid-September. It normally takes about three months to finish up that work. So by December, I think we will know for this year whether it's a thumbs up or if it's a thumbs down. And of course, then these companies may need to leave the U.S. market.